And welcome back, options traders, and happy Friday, everyone. Well, what is novation? This is a term that you probably don't hear a lot, but I think it's important, especially for all of our new traders. And for anybody who might be a little gun shy about buying or selling options, thinking that, hey, what if the person on the other side of the trade doesn't fulfill his or her obligations? So let's find out why that's not an issue. So yes, understand that whenever you buy and sell options, for every buyer, there is a seller. That is an absolute truth. The question that we have though, the fear that some people have, is who is the trader on the other side? And is this trader trustworthy or creditworthy? They might be trustworthy, but if they don't really have the financial wherewithal, maybe they won't deliver on this option contract. Or maybe they're creditworthy and they're just not real trustworthy. So maybe you buy a call, buy the $100 strike, and you exercise it and say, I want to buy my shares for 100 when the stock is trading at 130 and the person says, go take a hike. I'm not going to sell them to you. See, this is what's called counterparty risk. And if the markets were filled with credit party risk, then they would just break down. Nobody would want to buy or sell. And so this is where the OCC comes in. The OCC is, of course, the Options Clearing Corporation, and it acts as the buyer to every seller and the seller to every buyer. So let's say that this is our OCC building down here, that if you buy an option, you are really technically buying it from the OCC. You're not buying it from another trader, as many people would think. And conversely, if you sell an option, you are selling it to the OCC. You're not really selling it to another trader, again, as many people think. So this is a good visual to show that the OCC stands in the middle it's acting as the buyer to every seller and the seller to every buyer. However, when people sometimes hear this, they say, well, wait a minute, does that mean that the market quotes that we're seeing are all the OCC? So let's say that this is a limit order book for a particular option. This might be my bid right here at 99.90 and somebody else is down here at 99.80, another trader at 99.70 and so on. They're just stacked from the highest bid and in descending order. Over on the other side, we have the asking prices or the sellers, and they are stacked in ascending order. We have somebody who's willing to sell at $100.10. The next highest is $100.20 and so on. So as I've talked about in previous videos, the highest bid right here, $99.90, and the lowest offer become what's called the inside quote. This is what you're seeing on your broker's platform. And only when a buyer and a seller agree either somebody has to increase this bid or somebody has to decrease this offer, will a trade actually be made? And when that happens, it does get reported to the OCC. But until then, no, these are all individual traders. These are not quotes from the OCC, as I've heard many people say or believe. And again, they think that because they've heard that the OCC is the buyer to every seller and the seller to every buyer. And while that's true, these individual quotes are from individual traders. So how does the OCC end up getting in the middle? Well, this is where the process of novation comes in. Novation is just a legal term, and it basically means that it's a substitution of a new obligation for an old one. And it's usually by substitution of a new debtor or of a new creditor. Now, in the case of options, it's a substitution for both. So remember, when we have a trade, it is a two-party agreement. We have a buyer buying from a seller. We have a seller selling to a buyer. So what happens is that once this trade gets reported from two individual traders who don't know each other, but once it gets reported to the OCC, both the rights and obligations of one party are transferred to the third party, in this case, the OCC. And that's really what a novation is. It's this transferring of the rights and obligations from these individual parties, individual traders, to the OCC. And that's what allows the OCC to actually be the buyer to every seller and the seller to every buyer. So again, why is this important to understand? Because it ensures performance. And so it just ensures that all parties will abide by their rights and obligations. Now, as a side note, you might think, well, wait a minute, if you have a right, there's not really any risk to the seller. And that's not really true. If I buy an option and it goes in the money, you were the seller of the option, but the person who bought the option never closed it, now has an in the money option and now has an obligation. 
So yes, even though we think that buyers have rights, it's true, but in some instances, they will have obligations. And now how do you know that, that person's not going to say, I'm not going to buy your shares? So again, the whole idea of Novation is that it gives confidence to the market. So if you're ever in doubt about using options to hedge positions in these volatile markets or to look for fabulous opportunities and strategies, but you were afraid to because you thought, I'm just not really sure who I'm going to be matched up with as a buyer or a seller, those fears are completely alleviated by the OCC and Novation is the reason. And so for anyone who'd like to learn more about the arts and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course, Strategy Lab, and a technical analysis course. It's all at optionsa-z.com. Also, please join us on the Facebook trading group, Options A to Z, and you can find a link in the description below.